there's going to be more things coming down the pipe that we don't even thought about today. We have to be able to understand and deal with all of those things, which means, I think, what we really ought to do is start with a very simplistic model and come up with a base. So the course satellite strategy works like this. We start with a bunch of EPS that are log based and they're passive. Then we wrap around some styling. The most of us here really are going to be the future of mining. I should tell you that I'm not going to be able to do that. Then you can diversify by asset mix and geographic region. You can cut assets which can be cash products and create shares for the cost of energy and energy and energy and energy and energy. One of the things we did is we also added some risk management overlay to some of our nice products because what I wanted was I wanted something that would give me some alpha and give me the opportunity to grow into the future. So what we've built, I want to share this because this gives me the more spirit and more rapid than I thought. We built a corporate class structure that's got tax efficient capability with six different funds inside it. And six funds all in the ETS. So if you're in the neutral fund world, that's the only thing to deal with is a product that allows you to do that. So just looking at the income class as an example, the idea is to go ahead and have that income. There's four strategies. So there they are. Another example, same principle, you've got the objective is to have a very aggressive objective. There's also two strategies, large cap and fund indexing. Two main ETFs, and you've got the highest and very good overlay. Why action that? Here's the last point I'm going to leave with you because this is another example that I'm sure you folks are going to be familiar with. And it goes back to Portfolio Management. If you were in the hedge fund business, you've always marketed your idea on the basis of what the goal of that performance is because it's a historical great thing that I think is the best thing to better than the performance of most of the best types of investments that they've done now. But it's always been a great hedge fund. That is how people sold the concept of hedge funds back in the past. What they never say is that the real hedge fund is never leverage. Hedge funds never blow up because they're a bad strategy. They blow up because of leverage. Action writing is a long short strategy. It's a long start and it's a good one. So let's just pretend for a moment. Let's pretend, as we look back into this debate, that the reason most active managers don't meet their benchmark is because the markets are pretty efficient. Every university that teaches investment management courses teaches that the markets are efficient. If they're efficient, when you're buying a stock, you are paying a price that may be not good, may be not good management, but it is a price which has been provided to thousands of investors coming at this with various attitudes and concluding that the difference between the good and It's clear, it's reasonable, it's sufficient. And it is based on return expectations. I can't say that more loudly than I could have done. By return expectations, all I'm saying here is that when you buy a stock, somehow you translate into where you think that will go in the future. Somebody's concluded that's where the stock is going. So let's pretend that market's efficient. So let's pretend that's the reason most of that stock is going because you buy an oil and you're going to pay for it. Those efficiencies play out and they deliver what you were saying. 
Now let's walk over to the options market for a minute. The options market is efficient. It's protected. In fact, I would argue it probably is. But the options market does not focus on return. The options market is driven on the measurement of risk. In other words, the option traders aren't really concerned where something is going. They're concerned about how volatile it's going to be to get there. So they flip both games. If I tell you there's two teams playing, if you want to pick one of them and make a pick, if you want to make a pick, you have to pay a hundred pounds. If you pick up the team you think is going to damage by picking the stock, you can pick up the team that's going to win. The handicap is the risk that you have to play with if you want to make any money. If you bring risk and return together in a strategy, and they're both efficient, as long as you bring in some quality of money, there are two efficient markets coming together, you should always consistently get options. If you measure this with indexes and you have to pay a lot of money, you can pay a lot of money to the index, the red money is the TSX 60, the blue money is the top of the index, the blue line is the next level strategy. You actually have to perform for the year 16 years. The fact is, you get exactly the same metrics in the index as you have in the top 10. You get the exact same metrics in the NASDAQ. You get exactly the same metrics in DC. The financial times index in every other index around the world, including commercial markets, show us exactly the same thing. So, what is that? Well, all it is is all we mean by that is, in this case, the index from a bunch of other states is kind of like whatever they're going to do to the market. They were going to do it at 16%, at 17%, at 18%. That's only half the story. The risk that you take is the option market strategy, and it's 70% of the risk that you get if you're buying it. The point is this. Finish off with this, the debate that always comes up in the market. The answer that you have to deal with when you're talking to the financial world and investment world, what's the key to doing this? The collective brain is that it isn't all about feelings. They should go about feelings. It's really about the money. You want to get a little bit of money, you want to make it, you want to make it, you want to focus it, 